to sin. Today on Arts 24. These songs of freedom. A film about an icon. British actor Kingsley Benadire takes on a legend. When you write that. All my life. And before the film, what did Bob Marley mean to you? He was an idea and he was his music. Music is all about music. Unity of the world. And we hear from filmmaker Ronaldo Marcus Green. Unity, love, peace, it's what draws us to him. Bob Marley One Love has so far premiered in Paris. Let's join together and feel all right. Every night we'll be together. Les images, le, le, le paysage. Franchement, j'ai failli pleurer. The film has also been presented in Bob Marley's home of Jamaica. I am a superstar. Playing this role is a huge responsibility, and the whole family, the whole Marley family, were involved. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Really nice. Really, really um, special. So much of the process was with them. At, you know, I, I spent time with Stephen at his house and, and Rohan and Bob's friends who knew him when he was 13 in Trenchtown, Lego. I learned everything I know about Bob now through them and with them. You can't separate the music and the message. Every day we pay the price and what is the message? Peace. Tell us about the search to find the actor to play Bob Marley. It was long. <laughs> it was long and quite honestly, I didn't think it was going to happen. Um, we had just gotten so many tapes that were just off the mark. Really good actors, but uh, just not right to play Bob. You know, you needed to be the right age, it needed to be the right look, and obviously you need to be somebody that can take on, uh, take on this legend. So it was a behemoth of a, of a role, and, and lo and behold, I get this tape out of nowhere, and it's this guy by the name of Kingsley Benadir, who I didn't know anything about. It was a special moment where I started to say, whoa, this is possible, this is possible. Um, and then I got even more scared, because <laughs> then I was going to have to make the movie. Some people in Jamaica at first, though, they weren't a fan of the idea. They wanted raw Jamaican patois. How challenging was that part of the project? Very challenging, but, um, you know, I, I thought if you found a good actor, you'd be able to create that. And I thought, OK, with refinement, with the right time, with the family, with dialect, with all of those things, he can, he can get there with time. People are always going to say something, but a great performance is a great performance, and hopefully that's what they'll be talking about. Well, Kingsley did a great job. Um, I mean, it surprised everybody. Yeah. Jamaican people love him, so I think that says it all. Yeah. When I met him for the first time, I thought, this guy's going to be so committed to Bob. He's going to protect this man's legacy with all his heart, and he really did. He put his soul into this role. What about the... The way he spoke then, how was it learning and speaking Patois? Patois, it may as well have been French. It may as well have been French. Um, if anything, it was probably more difficult because it's an English-based language, so there's lots of words that are English. But the whole flow of the language and the, the structure of the sentences, it's a foreign language. There were days where I was like, if this was in French, yeah, I'd be learning the scene in French, and then I'd have French experts around me to help me find the, the nuance of, like, the French accent, depending on where I was based in France, if it was Le Bon Lieu or if I was central Paris or if I was from the country. So we had exactly the same thing with Bob. Normally you have one dialect coach, but on this movie we had a language team. So people from the Jamaican University, linguists, specialists, Jamaican dialect coaches who were alive in the 70s and remember how they spoke differently then. Um, I had my own dialect coaches, I had Jamaican friends come to my house. It was a whole process all the way through. Might be up for a film in French next. I'd like to get a French agent. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to try. <laughs> Do you speak any French? I can't come on. <laughs> but I could learn, two years. Reggae is the people music. And Bob Marley had a very distinct way of 
singing, speaking, dancing. How did you learn how to move like him? With a lot of help, <laughs> a lot of help. Uh, many months of feeling very confused, uh, but always from the point of view of understanding his psychology first. The way we all move comes from our experience. He's singing and dancing from such a such a specific place of uh, connection to something higher than himself, almost like seance, you know. It's, it's really a profound experience to watch him, and there's a, an undeniable magnetism that's unlike anything else. Um, so understanding that was really months and months of conversations, and dancing like myself to understand how we're different. My life is not important to me. My life is for people. Do you really think this world will make it? Yes. Bob had this enigma about him, just a mysterious man, you know, that you see on the T-shirts, uh, on the buttons, on the bags, and obviously you hear his music and it's amazing, but I didn't really know that much about Bob. Um, I thought I knew, was, you know, he's from Jamaica, and I could even recite some lines to the songs, but... I really didn't know anything about Bob. But yeah, Bob represented, obviously, unity, love, peace. It was in his music. It's what draws us to him. Um, but where he was singing from, what he was singing for, those were things that revealed themselves as I got closer to the, closer to the music. What did you learn about Bob the Man then, making the film? You know, I think there's an assumption whenever somebody's great at something that it just kind of falls out of the sky. You know, it's just this gift. And it was, but he worked really hard. They said he didn't sleep. He just, like, rested his eyes. I believe it. Um, you see it in the film. He's running his bandmates, um, the way he rides them. Uh, he was a perfectionist. He was militant. Uh, he was a revolutionary. He was somebody that felt that he didn't have an, a lot of time, so he... He just was went into creation mode. I mean, he essentially sang the Bible in a lot of ways. Um, he gifted us that. I was a fan in a way, but not like a... Uh, you got diehard fans who know Bob's full body of work. And now I do. Now I know, you know, before Concrete Jungle, all the way to survival and uprising and all of the work. So I definitely didn't know as much as I do now. But he was, ever since I, I can remember, Bob Marley was always played Notting Hill Carnival, and um, he's everywhere. The film premiered in Jamaica, mm -hmm. and you showed the film alongside the Bob Marley family, his brother Ziggy. Yeah, I was behind Rita. What was it like? Really special. Um, just energetically, you know, like it's... Uh, I had to take a couple of steps back and just breathe and take it in, because it was... Um, you know, their lives are on the screen, and um, they're just very sp special. It hasn't sunk in yet. I think that's what it, it hasn't sunk in yet. I think it's going to take a couple of years, because um, we're kind of still in it, you know, like bringing the film out and sharing it or handing it over in a way on, on Valentine's Day is going to be, you know, it's going to mark kind of the end of something and the start of something new. You recreated some very iconic moments what was the most memorable part of the production for you? It felt like a World Cup match um, from prep all the way through post. It had that level of intensity just because of who Bob is and what Bob means to so many people. Um, so there was no, like, there was no small moment. They were all big moments. It was challenging uh, shooting in different countries, uh, the biggest film that Jamaica's ever seen or had. Your last film, um, King Richard, was also about a real person. Mm. Is it not an incredibly immense pressure to make a film about someone who was very important, who, who existed? It is. It is, absolutely, and especially Bob. You know, Richard Williams, unless you're a huge tennis fan, nobody really, you know, nobody knows who Richard Williams is, so we can get away with a little bit more. Uh, with Bob, everybody knows Bob. But if you just break it down, we were interested in sort of trying to understand the man. Um, and a lot of people, myself included, didn't know who that was. Smile with the rising sun, three little birds, it's by my doorstep. 
sometimes the messenger has to become the message. Um, I didn't. I wasn't aware that Rita Marley gave him Rastafarianism uh, or planted that seed for him. These are new details about his life. I didn't understand their relationship and their courtship. It took a little bit of the pressure off um, of trying to just discover who he was as a as a person, as a father, as a husband, uh, as a musician. Um, and he wasn't a perfect person. He made mistakes. Um, but I think Ziggy said it best. Bob had a perfect purpose. I love that. His, his purpose in life was perfect. Was perfect. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Don't worry about the thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be all right. You like that one? Yeah. It made me think about what my father, what our father went through emotionally. Inside of him that wasn't shown on the outside. That wasn't seen in the in the photos or in the in, in the interviews, but it just made me think about what he went through as a human being, you know. Did the Marley family like the film? They love the film, and uh, that means a lot to me. Um, obviously, it's it's their dad, um, and so if if they think it's cool, I think it's cool, and they're pretty cool people. <laughs> I mean, Ziggy's like the coolest dude I know. He walks around, and you're just like, man, that that must have been Bob, man. So, what have you taken away from Bob Marley from the film? The feeling of um, what it means to dedicate your life to music and spirituality and what it costs to dedicate yourself in the way that Bob did. Like, it wasn't for free, you know? He didn't arrive at peace and love and unity without a huge struggle and without huge um, suffering. We throw around uh, the term kind of artist. Artist, I'm an artist, I'm an artist. And it's like, no, the art comes when it gets special. And Bob reached a place in his craft that m many won't. And I have just an admiration for him that is uh, unspeakable. Uh, yeah, I kind of love him, you know? <laughs> one love, one art, one destiny.